All right, guys, here's a, a portion of an interview on, live on yesterday's live broadcast I had um, with Mike from around the world, and um, he brought out some very significant things I think we need to take a look at. It's so many, there's so much moving and shaking going on as far as strategically, nations, militarily, everybody's posturing, isn't that right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. It's, uh, it's one of those areas, you know, we just live in a time where it's difficult to, uh, um, difficult to capture everything that's going on. And... Mike, let's go then, let's talk about for a minute the five waves of energy. Let's, you know, the Bible refers to there'll be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, the stress of nations. And it, and it talks about for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All right. Now, we know that, uh, as, as you've told us, that this first ripple, this first wave, the first impact of it will be around August 17th, but we're already feeling the effects of it. You said that there would be extreme straight line winds. I mean, we had a 95 mile an hour winds in Iowa. We're gonna have 70, 80 mile an hour all day long today across the Great Lakes. Extreme flooding, extreme drought. I mean, help me out here. Is this all symptoms of the uh, of the waves of energy? Well, it potentially could be. Um, there are physical effects to exotic energies introduced into our solar system, and it certainly could be. The one thing I do know is that we're still uh, enduring a atmospheric compression event. Okay. So our atmosphere is being smashed, um, which is which is uh, you know you know it's uh, it's contributing to very turbulent weather. So is this why? I mean, last week there was a hundred mile an hour straight line winds in Vietnam. It, they literally uprooted a thousand trees, tore the roof off about 139 homes smashed 13 cars, killed five people, and it wasn't a tornado at all. It lasted for 30 minutes. This wind came and it blew at, the, at this incredible speed. And then after 30 minutes, it left. I mean, is that is that a symptom of atmospheric compression driving this, you know, the jet stream down? It really is. Um... There's a there's a pattern forming. Our oceans are actually heating up, and with the uh, additional heat, you have an evaporation of the water from the oceans entering into the atmosphere, which is uh, it, it's actually causing quite a few low pressure systems to form and high pressure systems. Now, when a low pressure and a high pressure system, uh, when they form in between them, you have something called isobars which create these devastating uh, winds. You know, it's very compact um, systems in the atmosphere. As we continue to go through this uh, atmospheric compression, um, take your average cumulonimbus cloud is, is, is probably up to five miles in height. That, that would be the cap of it. Okay. Below the one and a half mile mark uh, to the ground, that's where you have your rain, but with atmospheric compression, what will happen is the intensity of a, of a cumulonimbus cloud, it would have the equivalency of a, let's say, six and a half mile high cloud. Now, what will happen in this, Pastor, we've read in the Bible about great hail, right? Yeah, and that's predicted for today. With large hail. They're saying today, they're saying today there will be definitely large hail. Today, they're just saying it. Right, okay, so with a compressed cloud like that, you have stronger updrafts because of cold and hot extremes. Um, so you're looking at an updraft in excess of 110 miles an hour, which can produce pretty large hail. There's a scale to the speed, there's a ratio to the speed of the updrafts and the size of hail. So with your stronger winds on the surface, creating updrafts going up into the cloud, it, it, it causes uh, water vapor to freeze up, but they're just floating there, going up and down in the cloud, building up uh, more ice until they become heavy enough 
to overwhelm or to uh, overwhelm the winds uh, of which the updraft is hitting. Now, it will likely see um, hail in the very near future, uh, probably maybe about 12, 12 pound hail. What? And normally it's nowhere near that high, but with the updrafts and the atmospheric compression, it's really going to cause some uh, super, super high winds. Also in the Bible, with great hailstones yeah. to be formed in the first place, you must have surface winds that are very high okay. to create those updrafts. And okay. So, so in other words, scientifically, the only way that hail, hail is formed because of uh, uh, straight line winds help in the process of, de or, or high winds. And what you're saying is to create hail the size of a talent, which is, I believe, 75 pounds. I mean, when I when I read that in the Bible, it blows my mind. I say, how in the world can there be 75 pound hail? I mean, but you're saying that it's very possible that soon we're going to be seeing and hearing of hail around 12 pounds. That's huge. I'm going to share this with you. A guy that goes to our church, his name is Dennis, him and his wife and, and, and family went out to uh, Mount Rushmore. So they were driving through South Dakota last week when they came into a major storm. And when they got in, it said just a, just a, a flash flood rain just pouring down like, you know, buckets. When all of a sudden he said hail bigger than your fist, balls of hail falling, cracked his windshield, dent the front of his car. I mean, people were just swerving, getting off the road. It was an, an unbelievable. He said it was unbelievable. He'd never seen anything like it. So we're going to see more and more of this is what you're saying. Yeah, it's a lot more, which which puts the surface winds in excess of 150 plus miles. An hour. What? Um, Mike, whoa, whoa, come on. So you're, you're, you're really looking at, um, now this is, this is going to be a culmination of events, but the weather has, the atmospheric compression is already beginning with the weather. What we're seeing now are, in, in comparison to uh, the systems that are forming, are mild storms. We've not had a severe storm yet. I, I guess the troublesome part of this, uh, concerning just the weather alone, and believe me, that's going to be the least of anybody's problems, it, is that um, everybody has become so conditioned to the storms that they're more of a uh, you know something interesting to know about but the reality is that uh, when the supercells uh, begin to form and they are of massive size can you imagine a thunderstorm from Montana to Alabama uh, that that type of rate what? I mean a thunderstorm that might the out of it. States. let me take a deep breath 12 pound hail 150 mile an hour straight line winds and a thunderstorm from Montana to Alabama. You gotta let me digest that, okay? You gotta let you gotta let me. You gotta let about 2,000 people digest that. So 10,000 people digest that. Whatever. I mean, Mike, is this? Are you are you saying you told us about these extreme weather conditions about a little over a year and a half ago? When do you? Uh, you know, I'm not holding you to it, but just when do you see 12 pound? hail 150 mile an hour wind thunderstorms that large i mean are we getting there in the next six months the next year what are you 10 years i think that we're going to have an off season this year it'll begin this year um and what i mean by that is the seasons we once knew and we're accustomed to there are going to be some altercations because Everything is changing now. Keep in mind that the oceans are heating up because of volcanism in the ocean floor. That hot, uh, the, the warmer temperatures are causing new type, new types of circulation in the ocean. Okay. Uh, that is part one of this interview. It's, it's a very revealing interview. He'll go on to talk about uh, internment camps. Walmart's role uh, in, and also the threats of war that are taking place and many other things, including the microchip and the RFID new technologies. Those will be coming up. This is part one. We'll be back in a few minutes with part two with the interview with Mike from around the world.